Real quick, before we get started on this video, I want to remind you that we are doing a giveaway. All Dogs Off-Road and myself have paired up to give you a second gen Xterra lift kit. So when you're done here, be sure to either head to the description down below or just go to rtcg.tv forward slash giveaway to read all the official rules and to throw your name in the hat. All right, let's get on with the video. So I've been talking about this for a little while, but it's finally time to get down to it. I have all the pieces in place that I need and we are going to swap the clutch in the Xterra. My Xterra has 150 some thousand miles on it. Hold on. 147,660 miles, I was wrong. But uh, it's of course on its original clutch and uh, it's just getting a little bit tired. So it's coming across with a few symptoms we'll talk about here in a minute, but it's high time. I went to the Nissan parts website and I bought OEM parts for this job. I get a little bit concerned with aftermarket clutches. Um, I've had a little experience with them and I haven't been uh, overly happy. So went to that website, picked up, of course, the clutch disc, the new pressure plate, all of the bolts that I need. And I also got, I believe, the pilot, pilot bushing and throw out bearing. So uh, we have those parts. We're going to go ahead, drop the transmission this morning, see how, uh, see how bad it is, and then uh, get it all swapped out. Easy as that. There could be quite a few symptoms you get when you have a bad clutch. Uh, you can of course have slipping, so the RPMs go up and the car isn't moving, or the car is maybe shuddering, or not being able to uh, you know, effectively grip, not be able to transfer that power from the engine to the transmission. If your clutch is dragging, then you might have issues getting it into gear, especially uh, first gear or reverse. If you have a bad throw out bearing, maybe you'll have uh, some noise that will go away when you get on the clutch, and then it gets noisy when you get off the clutch. There's a whole slew of different symptoms that might happen. But if your clutch is just getting old and getting worn down, like I feel mine is, one of the main symptoms you're gonna get is how far you have to release the pedal before the clutch actually engages. So if you have a clutch that has a lot of friction material and it's still really thick, then your clutch contact is gonna be further down on the pedal, so meaning closer to the floor. So for mine, I would expect on a healthy clutch to maybe start moving the car right around here and about, about halfway-ish down the throw of the clutch, if you will. On mine, I need to pull the clutch pedal nearly all the way out, like nearly right here before the Xterra starts to move. And then as soon as I let all the way out, obviously it still grabs pretty well and it drives without much issue, but that's far too out, if you will, for my comfort. So to me, this indicates that my clutch is just nearing the end of its life and needs to get swapped out. Now there's about a 20 step process uh, in the factory service manual on how to uh, remove the transmission. And uh, I'll make sure to put like a supplemental article out on my website that will actually walk you through all of those steps. And of course it'll have things like all the torque specs and bolt sizes, stuff like that. But um, on the bright side, it's, uh, it's not too bad. It, the stuff that I've seen isn't, doesn't seem like a huge deal breaker. And one of the steps is to just go ahead and remove the negative battery post from your uh, battery, of course. So take your 10 millimeter, pop that off, and guess what? Step one already done, 19 more to go. Now the next step is to tackle the shift assembly. And here we need to remove our shifter and all of the subsequent boots and protectors and bolts and all that. So for starters with uh, the Xterra, this is just a screw off shift knob. So we just unscrew that, make it nice and easy. There we go. Then this boot is attached to this plastic piece here. And if my memory serves me, we need to take off our cup holders to get to this lower piece. But a lot of this stuff is just grab and pull. So I have my little panel puller. So I'm gonna set that aside, pull out my cup holder liners throw those somewhere and then literally just grab your cup holders and pull up. Yeah, there's a little tongue here. I remember that now. Once that comes up, literally just again, lift on this. All right. And pull, there you go. Pops up there as well. Slide the upper boot off and there you go. Shift assembly is exposed. We now have four bolts that need to get tackled on our next uh, sort of boot here. And it looks like one is being covered up by a bracket. So we may need to loosen this one back here to 
get access to this, uh, to this bolt here. Of course, these are gonna be 10 millimeter, like just about everything on this, uh, on this truck. So let's go ahead and loosen these. So when you pull up on this, just be gentle, because this rubber is, uh, well, it's as old as your truck is. And so I'm gonna pull this, just kind of slide up. There we go. And then kind of flip it to the side here, pull it out. Excellent. Again, set that aside. And now we can see, uh, well, the top of our transmission, of course. There's the top of that. And oh, first of all, my boot is completely torn. That is unfortunate. Super cool. Well, good to know. Next, we need to remove this clip. This is just a zip tie. So um, if you have zip ties on hand, just cut this. And actually, yeah, well, I think you have to cut it. I don't know what else you would do. So I'm just gonna cut this off, pull this boot back, and there should be some bolts underneath this that we need to remove. All right, so both of these are zip ties. I'm just gonna snip the lower one off with my little snips here. There we go. And then let's see if we can flip this back here. Awesome. Flip that up. Now that we have that exposed, if you flip it back, you'll see one, two, three, three bolts. I'm just about bet my life they're 10 millimeters. Yep, surprise, surprise. Take those three off and pull this assembly out. Now, as I took the last one off, I applied some pressure because there's a little spring in here. So we just want to release it gently. There we go. And then just lift. So here is our shifter assembly. And uh, I'm going to go set this someplace safe. You can also remove the spring. Just lift the spring out. And uh, of course, just set that aside as well. Now we'll be back here for sure, mostly because you need to unclip all these, uh, this wiring loom from the body of the transmission and uh, unclip up some of the electronics, which might be easier to access from up here. But for now, I'm going to clean this surface and I'm just gonna tape this top off. I just get really nervous when I have, uh, you know, exposed internals. I'm clumsy and I'm concerned about dropping, uh, you know, bolts or really anything in here that I don't want to, uh, that I don't want to lose forever and damage my transmission. If you decide to do this, just use a, like a masking tape or even painter's tape will be okay. Just something that isn't gonna leave a bunch of residue on the surface, tape that down there. All we're doing is basically it needs to deflect like a, a flying bolt that might land on it or any junk that comes from the bottom of the Xterra as we're taking the transmission out. All right, I have this taped up as, as good as it's gonna get. I might even snap this sucker back in here because why not? Now that we have it taped off and I'm feeling good about the it being protected from anything falling in it, uh, we're done in here for now. So let's head outside and keep going. Next up, we are going after the crank position sensor. And that is in, well, it's in the transmission, but it is uh, obviously behind the motor and back here behind this wheel well. So I'm taking off the front right wheel well uh, cover. And I'm also gonna remove the tire because uh, I like to have as much room as I possibly can when I'm working on this stuff. So I'm gonna remove this, then we're gonna remove the inside cover and pull that sensor out. Excellent, nice and easy. Now in here we have four, six, uh, eight. There's eight screws we need to remove from this wheel well cover. And generally there's body panel clips, but mine always seem to be missing. Oh, there's one right here. I think there's gonna be, end up being two body panel clips. I don't know. Uh, half of my body panel clips are missing on this, but uh, I have this little clip remover. If you don't have that flat head screwdriver will usually work just fine. And I have my little uh, Phillips head screwdriver. So just remove all of that and pull this away so we can have access to the rear of the engine. So now that all of that is loose, we just kind of want to push it in towards the inside and then kind of pop that, ooh, this uh, little ridge out. There we go. Excellent. Pull that out, set it aside. If you have any service that needs done, 
on your uh, windshield washer fluid tank, now is the time to do it. Uh, this is where it is. It's right behind the, the wheel area in, uh, in the right side wheel well. But we are not interested in that. We are interested in what is back here. So let me go, uh, let me go grab my GoPro and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Now this is pretty simple to find once you have this removed. You simply just kind of uh, follow the firewall and then you'll see a little connector here with a cover. And if you pull that cover back, you will see, uh, well, the, you'll see the connector and you just pull that little connector off. So now that that's been taken off, we just need to uh, take a little ratchet, pull that little nut off and pull this sensor out. So I'm going to, of course, get my 10 millimeter. What else would that be? And then loosen it. There we go. Perfect. Just back that screw out and then just pull that sensor out. Keep that someplace safe. Make sure you're not uh, jarring it or uh, hitting it. These are, if I know sensor, this is probably $125. So set it someplace safe and then we'll, uh, we'll keep on going. Next up, we are moving underneath. So we need to remove things like the front cross member, I assume for clearance, uh, the starter motor, the exhaust. So all that of course is underneath. So at this point, I'm going to lift the Xterra up. So I'm gonna lift it up on all four sides and I'm gonna get jack stands underneath each corner to give us clearance when we're ready to actually drop the transmission. Make sure you're using the proper lift points on all four corners and then, uh, and then let's keep going. Now the next step in the manual says to remove this front cross member. Um, to be honest, I don't really think we're gonna need to do that. The transmission, the body at least, is in front of it. And I know we're gonna have the shaft to deal with, but we should theoretically, once it's on the stand, pull it off and then keep moving it a little further back and just drop it in front of this cross member. So um, obviously this is technically part of the steps, it's just these four bolts. I'm not going to do it, but um, you know, we'll see. Once we, drop the, once we drop the transmission, if it interferes, I will have to remove it. Next up is our starter motor. So in here, we have uh, a couple bolts. It's just two bolts to hold the actual starter in. However, there is the exhaust heat shield, or I guess technically the shield that protects the starter, that we need to, at a minimum, loosen. So we need to take this bolt um, out, and then there's another one, I believe, a little bit higher. And then once you do that, you can actually just bend this back to get to that bolt, that mounting bolt. And then the other one is on uh, the back of the starter motor. I can't really see. I think this is it right here. So pull those two out, and then we can of course get the, um, the starter out. But before we do any of that, there's two electrical connections we need to remove. One is going to be a bolt holding on a, uh, you know, like a regular wire clamp. And then there is a standard sort of electrical connector you just have to pinch and remove. The electrical connection is just, again, like a standard clamp style. So you just got to push down on it. Uh, see if I can get my fingers up there. Push down and pull out. There we go. So that one's disconnected. And the other one is a, uh, a nut that needs to be removed. Believe it or not, this one is not a 10 millimeter. This one appears to be a 12. So that's what it looks like against the back of the motor. You just gotta pull that off along with this other electrical connection. And now that both of these are out, we can start on mounting it. So I removed the two bolts on this uh, kind of heat shield here. So if we could peel that back, you'll see it gives you a bunch of extra room. So now we can access this bolt here. And of course this one was always accessible. Okay, with that new space here, I'm going to just loosen this. This is going to be 14 millimeter. I'm grabbing not only a deep socket, but also a long extender, mostly because there's just a lot of stuff back here to kind of run into and I need a little more space. So there we go. Now that that's on there, we're gonna get underneath here, give it a good tug. Ah, there we go, excellent. So now that that's broken loose, 
just gonna unscrew it, pull it out. Awesome. So we have that bolt out. Now we just need to do the same on this bolt here. Boy, those are on there. There we go. Woo, excellent. Second bolt out. See if this will move for us. There we go. Ah, perfect. Now this should rotate out. Awesome. Starter is out. So set it aside. Let's keep on going. So next up on the list is the propeller shaft or drive shaft for most people. And these tend to be intimidating for people only because, you know, it's a it's a giant piece and it's mechanical and it makes you kind of feel like you're taking apart half your car, but it's really no big deal. Especially in the uh, Xterra, it's just four bolts in the rear. So we just need to take out these four bolts and the front should slip right out of the transmission. So the only important thing here to note is, first of all, make sure that you have this thing uh, marked. So as you can see here, I have a little mark on the, uh, the front piece and of course the, a mark on the receiving piece. And this means that it needs to go in the same orientation that you took it out. So make sure you put a mark here like a paint pen on both of these pieces and then just take your four bolts out. So we have all four of our bolts out here. Now this should start, there we go, loosening. And now in the front, just slowly kind of work that out. That should come out as well. All right, let's see if I can work this a little bit. There we go. Push it into the transmission. And then we'll probably, let me take a look here. What do we have to do? Lift it up, yeah, we can lift it up, I guess. There we go. Get it above that. And then we'll want to very gently continue to slide it out of the transmission. There we go. And it is out. Um, honestly, we can probably, we can probably leave it right here. We have a drive shaft sort of catcher that uh, is designed to, of course, catch the drive shaft if something happens. And so I'm gonna let that sit here for now. If we need to end up moving it out of the way, we'll just, uh, we'll figure it out then. All right, now the manual states to take off all the upper uh, piping in the exhaust. And, you know, after looking at it, it looks like just the catalytic converters are uh, what's going to kind of obstruct our removal of the transmission. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just remove the catalytic converters and hope that that clears up enough space. We're going to start by getting back up from underneath the vehicle. We're going to take off both of our inner uh, wheel well protectors and then take off our heat shields on our exhaust. Now this is the heat shield that covers of course the exhaust manifold right off the side of the engine and there are three 10 millimeter bolts. You see one here, one over here, and then there's one actually right below uh, kind of near the center of that of that guard. One issue here is my bolts are incredibly rusty. So I broke them loose and they started backing out nice and easily until they got to a certain point and they got very, very difficult. So uh, what I really want to avoid is freaking snapping these things off and then not having a heat shield or only having two bolts and having it rattle. So I'm just gonna take a little break. I went ahead and sprayed some PB Blaster uh, in the threads of each one of these. I'm gonna let them sit for a little bit and see if I can get them to back out without breaking. Okay, I think I'm lucking out here. It's been a couple minutes, I let them sit. Yes, okay. So we'll let this come all the way out. Awesome. So yes, these are really rusty and really small. So definitely use caution, but remove uh, all three on both sides. And then uh, we'll start attacking these catalytic converters. So now that that's free, you have to just kind of push it and move it around inside of the uh, engine bay to gain access to those upper flange bolts that hold in the catalytic converters. The one on the top, I was able to access from up above. The one on the bottom, of course, I was able to get to on the bottom. The one on the right side was the hardest one to get to. 
And uh, in here, I had to literally take a standard wrench and bend back the heat shield, get the wrench on there, and then since I already hurt my finger once today, I took some string, some really strong string, and I sat outside of the wheel well and pulled. Um, I wanted to spare you guys watching that anyways, but once that broke loose, I'm, I'm gonna be able to get all of those nuts off. And so once we're done doing that, we just go to the other side here at the bottom and uh, take those two bolts out. Those should be easy to, to access without an issue. And then pull that whole assembly out. The other side, the left side, uh, it looks like just from, just from looking at it, if we take our heat shield and slide it forward, we should be able to easily access all three bolts on the catalytic converter. Now on the left hand or the driver's side, it should be, uh, again, a lot easier. So if we just push this forward, this is our heat shield, get that out of the way and unplug our O2 sensor. Just pull the three bolts off of that, uh, uh, that flange there for the catalytic converter. And then again, we're gonna take the other side off a little bit further down the back of uh, the Xterra and pull both of these out. Excellent, so I have the three bolts on the upper end of the, uh, each catalytic converter taken off. Uh, I tried to take video for you guys. I'm sorry that I couldn't. Uh, I, couldn't I couldn't get anywhere where you'd actually see uh, what I was doing, so the footage was kind of unusable, but uh, I took a few photos just to kind of show you how I had some of the wrenches in there, and uh, so I could actually take them out, but I, I will tell you the ratcheting wrenches that I picked up recently uh, were instrumental in this. So I'm sure you could do it without it. You just got to get really creative or, you know, take it off the, <laughs> take it off the nut 15 times to uh, back it out. But these were definitely a huge help. But now that we have this, I also took the O2 sensor dongle, if you will, and disconnected that. That one's real simple. Again, you just take the, um, you take the white sort of clip and then you flip it up and then the connection comes out. So uh, now let's get back underneath and take out a couple bolts on the exhaust near the uh, center and then try to pull these assemblies out. So we are uh, back underneath uh, the vehicle and uh, it's nice, I missed it down here. But what we're gonna do is, I'm going back a little bit on the exhaust system so this is where it turns and meets the, uh, the passenger side. But we're on the driver's side for now and what we're gonna do is just remove the bolts right here and hopefully there's enough wiggle room in this once both are loosened that I can kind of slide this forward enough that these, these uh, studs will kind of come off and we can remove that. So the manual technically says to remove the front pipes, which is this going up. Um, so that's all right, let's remove them and uh, let's see what happens. All right, before we finish taking this other one out, one quick reminder, there is an oxygen sensor, so a downstream oxygen sensor that uh, you'll need to disconnect there as well. You'll notice it's connected to the transmission anyways, so we, that needs to be removed anyways, but just go ahead and do it now before, uh, before we pull this thing out. Okay, so we are loose. Let's see if we can pull this out enough. All right, well, this is a gasket surface, so I don't really wanna go crazy on it. I was thinking about just putting a little wedge in here, but really shouldn't damage that surface too much. Ah, oh, man. Come on. All right, f it. I'm gonna wedge it apart. Now that it's apart on the bottom, as you can see, the catalytic converter side is pretty darn loose. So I'm convinced that if I get these to pop off, then the whole thing should kind of fall down. But be very careful. See your O2 sensor and how close it is to this heat shield. Uh, we really should be removing this, but um, well, let's just, I'm just going to see what happens. Uh, you know, if you feel more comfortable pulling it out first, that's fine. But I'm, I'm sure that if these come out and the whole thing drops, you're going to get some more room for that O2 sensor. All right, this is not working. We need a plan B here. So I think my problem was that uh, I came up above a little too prematurely. I think I need to remove this as well. So this will move more freely, the kind of collector pipes and the exhaust. From this point back, the exhaust is on hangers. And so the hangers have a lot of room. So if you'll notice, 
if you can see this right here, the steel hanger is sitting inside. So there's a lot of space right here. There's a, a solid inch that hopefully I should be able to push this and it will flex a little bit, allowing me to free up the space up here. Even once it's loose, we still have to contend with the cross member here. Once the cross member gets uh, taken out, that's when the exhaust, I think, will be able to actually fully be removed. All right, let's see if we can get some more movement here now. There we go. Perfect. Yes, that's the ticket. God, I hate working on exhaust. So the way I got it off here is I slid, once both were disconnected, so you see both are disconnected there, I was able to slide the rear assembly far enough back that everything kind of loosened up. So you'll see this hanger's pushed really far back, but it's still suspended. You don't have to remove it, at least uh, not so far. And so once this uh, was loosened, it came out and uh, the front catalytic converter, at least on the right side, has popped out. I just heard it. Let's go look. Yes, yeah, sure enough, as you can see there, it has come out and it should be nice and loose in here. Yes, awesome. So at this point, we still need to remove the cross member on the bottom. So just make sure that it isn't resting on the O2 sensor and then make sure the other side is popped out and loose as well. And then we can go uh, continue underneath. All right, my friends, we're getting pretty close here. So we need to remove our um, operating cylinder or slave cylinder. And then once that's removed, we need to take all the electronics off of the transmission, remove the cross member and start taking it out. So for this, again, this is just two simple bolts. Should probably do it the right way. There we go. Both 14 millimeter, just loosen these two and then just tie this up somewhere safe where it's not gonna get caught kind of in the, in the crossfire, if you will. Oh, did I just break this? This is the only way that it's connected to the transmission. This just has a little piston in here that pushes this lever, which then pushes the clutch. So just drop these two. I'm gonna find a place, maybe up here, I don't know. We'll put it somewhere safe. Uh, for whatever reason, this, <laughs> this particular piece, this is probably a, I don't know, it's like a $20 piece. But if you uh, go to Nissan's website, it's like $550 or something absurd like that. Uh, so be careful with this. Don't, uh, don't break it or, uh, you know, damage it in any way. Cool. Now this is free. Let's, uh, let's keep going. Let's get our electronics taken out and take out our cross member and get our uh, jack support up here. While the transmission is still being held up by the vehicle itself, we should take this opportunity to uh, go around and make sure all of the electronics are disconnected from it. So to give you an example, let me show you this. Around the back end where our uh, shifter is, you'll see all these electronics that uh, need to be taken off. So you need to unplug things, make sure that there's no physical connections between the transmission and uh, the body of the car. If you look back here near where your uh, shifter is, there's the inside of the vehicle you'll see all kinds of different electrical connections and things kind of strapped to it. You have your park, uh, your park neutral switch, you have your backup indicator, all of those things that need to get removed. So um, the next step is technically to get a transmission jack under here and get it supported to take out this cross member. But uh, I think this is a good opportunity since there's a lot of space right now to go in and disconnect these things. So go ahead and do that and then we'll move forward. In addition to all the electronics, once you get all these loose, obviously you're gonna be able to drop the transmission without messing anything up, but there's also a little breather hose up here. Hopefully you can see this. There's a little breather hose that goes up near where, uh, where the shifter is. And if you look closely, you can just about see where it goes into the uh, transmission. And believe it or not, this actually slides off. There we go, slides off very easily. So just go ahead and remove that little breather hose as well. Uh, just kind of jam your hand up there. Getting it back on might be fun, but for now it's pretty easy to take off. All right, we're getting so close. I'm excited. 
What we want to do next here is grab our transmission jack and we want to slide this into place. So, we get that here, there we go. And I'm using a uh, basically low profile transmission jack. Uh, as you can see, the, uh, it's going to be, it's already going to be a super tight squeeze getting this thing out of here, but um, you need to have something as low as possible to, uh, well, to make that happen. We don't have a lift to deal with. We don't have uh, any way of getting the exterior super high in the air, so this is going to have to do. I'm going to go ahead and get this in place and get the strap around it. This is just a standard ratchet strap. So I'm going to do that, make sure I'm not going over any of the breather hoses or any of the electronics and then strap this in place. The jack itself just has a standard half inch uh, kind of inlet here that I can throw this on. There we go. And that way we can adjust the jack up and down. Now I'm gonna throw this over there, get my strap over here and start feeding it through. Now I'm gonna push this back some and get it right up against this cross member. There we go. And then I'm going to grab my strap and feed it through. So if I just feed it up this way near the, near the rear of the transmission, the strap is more than long enough to kind of just feed up like that. There we go. Feed it around the back side, over where our shifter goes in. Just kind of keep sliding it up. You want the electronics, of course, to be on the outside. We're pretty close. I think uh, I'm going to go to the other side. Just kind of lift it up a little bit because it, there we go. Actually, I think that did it. Yeah. All right. I'm going to stick my hand up this side. Make sure I don't feel it pinching anything. I don't feel anything. And then I'm going to go do the same on the other side and then we'll strap it down. All right, I'm not going to strap it too tight. I need to be able to play around a little bit and move it around if I need to. So I'm not going to go crazy on this. So this is about as far as I'm going to go. All right, time to remove our cross member. We need to take the insulator bolts off or the rear transmission mount. Those are going to be 17 millimeter. And so I'm just going to grab my impact, pull those off. Put those someplace we're going to remember what they are. And now each side, we have two bolts in the front and we have two bolts in the rear on each side. So I'm going to take the four up front off first. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to be strategic about this because again, you have these resting on the, on the uh, cross member. And so I'll probably take one off on one side and then both off on the other so it kind of hinges down and that way I can have like a controlled drop of this exhaust and then uh, and then the other side I'll just do I'll take it out and and obviously just do a control drop on that side. So it would appear that the bolts on the front have nuts on the back end so we just have to grab a wrench throw it on the top there so those uh, stop spinning. So we have those out, one of the loudest things I've ever heard. And so both are out on this side, but they seem pretty, uh, pretty tight in here. So I'm kind of wondering if they're just kind of, you know, stuck in there from uh, age or something. I don't know.
So that was utterly unbelievable. Between the pulling the exhaust out and that cross member, um, those two steps I spent more time on than everything prior to that. So super annoying, but cross member absolutely has to come out, but the uh, exhaust is still kind of up in the air. I've seen a few videos on YouTube where uh, it looks like they didn't take them out. Maybe they, you know, bashed in some heat shields or something. I don't know, but uh, that's all right. We took it out. That ship has sailed. We have a lot of space now. All we need to do at this point is, well, really two things. If you didn't get the breather hoses out, you need to get some that are on the engine side and some near the, uh, where the shifter is. If you aren't able to reach those, which I don't think you are without at least lowering the transmission, we just want to take our jack, lower it a little bit, and that's going to turn the entire engine assembly and uh, transmission back a little bit so we can actually fit our hands up there and we need to remove that hose. Secondly, uh, take all the bolts out. There are 17 millimeter bolts. There is 10, so there's five on kind of each hemisphere on each side. And uh, those are gonna be 17 millimeter. The ones that are gonna be the hardest are absolutely the ones that are at the top of the transmission behind the engine. And then, um, and then the rest should be relatively easy to get to. So let's go knock those out and uh, let's get this transmission out of this Xterra. So like I said, I'm just gonna grab this ratchet here and lower this. As you can see, the transmission is starting to drop. I can hear something kind of creaking. I don't really like that. And right there are the breather hoses. I'm looking through the passenger side wheel well. And so those are the ones you want to remove. And of course, you see the one on the far back that should already be disconnected from the transmission. We also see one of our bolts back there. And there's going to be two below it and then another one down below. As I'm going through and making sure that I'm removing all of the bolts, obviously we have the bolts from the transmission side going into the engine, but if you look here, there's a sneaky little bolt here that uh, is going from the front, so basically from the engine side into the transmission, sort of like, uh, sort of like the starter bolt. So uh, make sure that's removed. That's gonna be a 10 millimeter. Take that sucker out before trying to drop the transmission. Oh, it looks like this is uh, our flywheel access panel, and this is kind of interesting. This has a lot of oil on it, which uh, indicates to me we might have a rear main seal leak. But uh, regardless, uh, I guess this doesn't really have to come off, but uh, I removed it anyway, so there you go. So let's finish taking the rest of our bolts out and pull this thing off. All right, so I have literally now spent hours trying to get the top two bolts, uh, transmission to engine bolts off, and when they finally broke loose, I cried like a baby. Um, so that last part isn't true. However, uh, it did take a lot of energy to get these things off. The way that I did it is uh, I lowered the engine in the transmission and then I found just a, as many extensions as I could find and then slid them up the body of the transmission and then used an impact wrench to, or excuse me, an impact drill to uh, pull the, uh, pull those top bolts out. So once I finally got to that point, it made sense, but uh, a lot went into figuring that out. So uh, now that we have those off, we just have to take off the remainder of the transmission to engine bolts. There is um, eight at this point, and the rest of them are uh, relatively incredibly easy to, to reach at this point. Just go into your wheel wells or go underneath, of course, and just unscrew all of those. You wanna make sure that you're in the most neutral position that you can be right now. So basically where the, transmi where the transmission should be is where you want it lifted to. You don't want it jerked really far down or really high up because when you slide it off, that engine's gonna kind of flip back into place. So go all the way around and uh, make sure that you have all of the bolts out and we can finally, finally, finally slide the transmission out. So this is it, we have all of our bolts out. So what we wanna do at this point is just make sure we do one final check. It doesn't matter how you get to it, how you see each side of it, but look all the way around, make sure everything is disconnected. If for the main bolts, there's just 10, so you can just literally count them, make sure you have 10. But look around it, make sure your electrical connections are off and even try to get your hands up on top of the transmission and run it, you know, run your fingers across it. Make sure there's just nothing connected to it anymore. 
and then uh, I already did that. Mine feels good, so I'm ready to uh, slide the sucker out. So here we go, gentlemen, let's do this. I'm gonna try to move a little bit on the jack here. Slide that aside. Just kind of see where we go here. Okay, what is it hitting? Okay, seem to be sort of crushing something up here. That's not good. Shit. There we go. Woo. That could have been bad. I'm gonna run my hands up, see if the bell housing is maybe, yeah, that's what it's doing. The bell housing is hitting the body. So I'm gonna try to lower a little bit, see if I can get, see if I'm off the actual clutch yet. Oh, what the f was that? There it goes. Okay, I heard a very concerning snap. Uh, <laughs> hopefully, I'm gonna guess it was maybe a tine on the pressure plate, but uh, we'll find out if I broke something. So I'm going to, again, very gently start lowering this. All right, I'm gonna go make sure that this thing is actually disconnected up front. It looks like it is. So I'm lowering it as I'm pushing it back. There we go. And it's just really lopsided. Ah, I, think, I think I should have put the transmission jack further back. Ah. Oh yeah, oh yeah, definitely. All right, folks, it is learn from Ryan's mistakes time. And look what I did. I forgot to drain some of my transmission fluid. So uh, not only that, I put the stand too far forward on the transmission and the rear of it dropped. And of course, this seal in the rear is just open. So when it tilted, it poured all of the transmission fluid out. So I'll talk about this in a minute, but let me go clean this up. Well, I have an absolutely massive mess I need to clean up under the Xterra. My mistake, um, but for now, I just wanna get the transmission out from underneath. So I'm actually gonna come back up front and jack the front end like to the sky and try to get it out with the transmission jack underneath it. The transmission jack does add about, I guess, six inches of height. Um, if that doesn't work, I'm gonna have to take it off the jack underneath and then kind of slide it out on like some cardboard or something, but you'll see, let's do it. Yes! It's out. Guess what? Uh, I just decided that this is now gonna be a two-part video. Uh, I just made an absolute massive spill uh, in the garage. And, um, you know, you're watching this video from, from beginning to end most likely, but for me, it's been like four days. And so I come and I work for a couple hours, then I leave and come back. So I think that's how I missed it. But the point is, is that you were supposed to partially drain, if not fully drain the transmission before doing this. And you can clearly see why. Uh, when the transmission, of course, leaves the engine, and another problem I did, which we'll talk about in a second, was the transmission jack, but when the, when the transmission came down, it tilted, and then of course pissed transmission fluid um, everywhere out of the rear seal. Uh, obviously, the rear seal works great only when the uh, drive shaft is inserted. Obviously, when you take it out, it's just a gaping hole. Second lesson learned is I put the transmission jack way too far up on the transmission. I put it up here. Um, Obviously, you know, probably in your head, you're thinking, oh, this is bigger, right? This is bigger, so it's gonna weigh more. Not true, this is empty. Um, I should have thought of that. But this front end is empty and clear of most things. And this is where all the guts are, right? So all the weight is actually in the rear of the transmission. So the real fun, honestly, is gonna be figuring out how I'm gonna get it back in there uh, because I had to drop it onto the ground and drag it out and then also jack the exterior like as high as my floor jack would, would let it go uh, to get this out without the, the transmission jack under it. So um, it's gonna be fun, but I'm probably gonna have to slide it back in 
and then lift the rear of the transmission and then slide the jack under it while it's underneath the Xterra. But this is the life of, uh, of someone who doesn't have a, a two post lift, right? So I'm showing you how to do it in your garage and that's just, uh, that's just how we're gonna have to do it, folks. This is also another job that, generally speaking, I really like to advocate that people work on their cars um, and they can do it on their own by themselves. And this is one of those jobs where I think I'm gonna go against that and say you really should have a second person uh, to help you with, uh, with a lot of this stuff. So uh, it was heavy, it was awkward. I didn't hurt myself, surprisingly enough, but I could see it being very easy to hurt yourself. So uh, definitely keep that in mind. So what we're gonna do in our next video is actually swap the clutch. That was the whole point of doing this, right? This transmission is perfectly fine. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it. But uh, I am going to, of course, replace the throwout bearing, uh, clean it all up. You can see very clearly where I had from, uh, these were actually from my valve cover uh, leaks that I had previously. And there's uh, a lot of sludge on the insides, very dirty in here. That would indicate to me that uh, I have a rear main seal leak. And of course, some of this would have made it into, but regardless, probably rear main seal as well which uh, I did purchase as part of my kit, so I'll show you how to install that. But that's pretty much it for some final thoughts. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do a lot of cleanup. I gotta go clean this up, and then, uh, and then I'm done for the day. We're gonna, I'm, gonna go, uh, I'm gonna go grab a beer. As always, folks, I really do appreciate you checking out these videos and following along with me during my uh, sometimes haphazard journeys on working on the Xterra. Uh, if you did in fact like this video, please, please, please make sure to like it and share it with someone who you think can benefit from it. And uh, always, of course, subscribe. Make sure you subscribe to keep up on more content on the Xterra. Uh, see you in the next one when we swap out this clutch.